he's ready. He's ready to speak to you. So let's pray. Let's get into the word. God, thanks again for this great family. All of our friends joining us, some from back in the day, Sioux City, Iowa, and really all throughout the world. You're a great God, just an amazing father. You're gracious, and you wanna speak a fresh word to hearts today. And so we wanna posture ourselves in a position of receiving anything you wanna say to us. Soften our hearts, pray that we'd be good soil. We'd all walk away different, met with the king of the universe. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, have you had someone so mad at you that they wanted to take revenge on you? Maybe lay hands on you physically. Anybody at church? You're like, man. I, uh, I did something dumb way back, and honestly, I kind of deserved this guy trying to take some revenge out of my life. I, I liked his girlfriend. And how many know, man, don't, don't, I mean, you mess with someone's girlfriend when you're 16 years old. <laughs> Gloves can come off quick. And I might have told you this story. This is a true story. I think it was my sophomore year, the guy... I was walking down like high school and I looked up and I had a fist in my face and I was on my back. But it didn't stop there. You see, I had a, uh, I had a 77 Monte Carlo. <laughs> now, Josh put that up there. Mine actually had red velour interior, <laughs> six by nines in the back, blaring Metallica. <laughs> Dating myself. And see, one day I was driving the Monte, that's what I call it, the Monte. I was driving it up my, my street where I lived and the lug nuts were loosened on my tires. Now, that's like gangster stuff, you know, over like kilos and whatnot, not over a girl. Good thing I realized it and wobbled home and had someone tighten those lug nuts up. Some would say, wow, over that? Maybe you were the one. You were so hurt. Someone took advantage of you. Someone undervalued you. Maybe you were the one that went to make a dumb decision in a state of wrath that you were gonna regret, and maybe you, you had. And you do regret it to this day. Maybe you were on your way to go take revenge on someone and someone that was really, really solid interceded right at the right time when you were about to make the dumbest decision and they interceded and by God's grace, you, you happened to like come to your senses and go, okay, it's probably not the right thing to do. Anybody ever had that? that that's what we'll see in this story today. David, remember David, little shepherd boy David who became the king? In our text today, he was getting chased by Saul. He, remember he's got his 600 bandits that he's hanging out with, they're all depressed and, and uh, in debt. How about, how about that for your team? Just all the depressed and in debt people. All right, come follow me. And there's this guy Nabal, this rich dude, and it was, Fleecing time, they would, you know, take the sheep and they'd kind of get the clippers out, you know, and like shave off <laughs> the wool and uh, it was party time. And all Dave wanted was just a little love from, from this rich guy. He'd been guarding the sheep. And you read this, you read it last week. And Nabal, like the nerve of Nabal. He's like, who's Dave? Talk about, nah, I ain't giving you no, no, no fleece, no wool. And David, I'm, I'm picturing David, and I, I don't know about if this is really true, but I'm picturing David had some insecurities because you remember when he grew up, he was the youngest of all these kids, and I think he got overlooked. 
And I, had, I think he had some insecurity. And I think that touched the deep resource of his soul. And now he erupts and he's like, oh, is that right? And he takes his dudes, 400 of them, and he's on a mission to take the lug nuts off Nabal's Monte Carlo and take his life and everybody around him. And I'm wondering today if that's where you're at. So angry, so frustrated, you're about to do something dumb. That's one of the reasons I came to preach today, to talk you off the cliff so you don't go down and actually regret something so bad. So that's some people in here. Others, it's just a reminder that pride kills. You'll see in the story at the end of it, spoiler alert, old Nabal dude who was, <laughs> his actually name means fool. Let's get into it. I, I don't know. I, I'm telling you the whole story and I'm not giving you the Bible. Write it down. Number one, if you're a note taker, hardened. This guy was hardened. Number one, he was hardened. Verse two, 1 Samuel chapter 25. If you don't own a Bible, we got a ton of them in the back, by the way. Please grab one, bring a pencil, a highlighter. This is not a show. This is a Bible study. I try to make it fun, but man, the whole key to this church is you get in your own Bible every single day to the glory of God. Every day, grab one, get a reading guide. Some people talk about the Bible is boring. No, not my Bible, especially not where we're at right now. First Samuel 25, starting in verse two. There was a wealthy man from Maon who owned property, okay, landowner, near the town of Carmel. He had, check this out, 3,000 sheep. It's like 3,000 shares of Tesla. That's basically what he's saying and a 1,000 goats, 1,000 doors, rental properties, man. And it was sheep shearing time, party time. This man's name was Nabal and his wife, Abigail. I, I, that's why I was thinking of you all week. It's nabs and abs. It's Nabby and Abby, whatever you wanna say. The odd couple. And, and Abby was sensible and beautiful. That's what I was thinking about, He's sensible and beautiful. But Nabal, uh-oh, everybody say Nabal. Oh, Nabal, he was a descendant from Caleb, which is so weird, because Caleb was a righteous dude. How did Nabal come out of that lineage? Hey, by the way, parents, you can raise your kids in the word of God, in a godly way, and you can have dudes that just lose their mind. Grace. So Nabal, he was what? He was crude and mean in all his dealings. Crude and mean in all his dealings. You ever see that couple that doesn't seem to match, by the way? It's like a nerdy looking dude with some like strikingly beautiful babe. Anybody ever seen that? It's like my wife and I, they're always like, how did you get her? The big ears, you know, and like the floods and dude doesn't have no game. You know, it's like, how? <laughs> yeah, that's these guys. Old nabs and abs, just a weird couple. You got the bad boy with the bucks. You got the... Beautiful babe with the brains, so thoughtful. It, it's interesting, Abigail, her name means joy of the father. So many of you women, I, I, I'm so grateful for godly women, humble, sensible, beautiful, inside and out. It's one of my favorite things about my wife. Yeah, she is strikingly beautiful on the outside, but even more strikingly beautiful on the inside. That, that's, that's Abigail, joy of the, joy of the father. And then you get Nabal, again, his name means fool. How about that, by the way? And I don't know if like the parents were like, you know, like, okay, what name should we think of? Fool. <laughs> Folly. I think it was a nickname that he got, you know, over the years and it's just stuck. Because the guy, he's crude, he's mean. In the King James version of the Bible, the, the word for crude and mean in this text is churlish. Churlish, and I want, I want you to see that on the screen. This is what it means, hard, cruel, severe, obstinate, stubborn, and stiff-necked. You know those kind of guys? That's me at times, stubborn. I think the greatest leaders are really stubborn, but they gotta be softened of their stubbornness. This guy right here, Mean, he's churlish, he's hard, he's hardened, he's cruel. And so, 
He's rich, he's got all these sheep. And in this time, in this culture, it was kind of like end of the year, if a business was doing really good, right, you get a bonus. That was kind of the idea. It was this, this big fiesta. And because like, you know, the flocks were producing, typically a very rich owner would, would have a big party and then he would distribute a lot of end of the year bonuses to all these people. And so David was kind of like a contractor. He was like taking care of the sheep. He wasn't really hired, but he was just doing volunteer as he was in the wilderness. And so he goes to him in, in verse four through nine and he's just like, hey, we've been protecting your sheep. We've been, you know, we've been doing you right. Would you mind just share, you know, sharing just a bit of your, of your blessing? Just a little bit. Just a little bit end of the year Christmas bonus. Just, just take care of us a little bit. And certainly Nabal, the rich guy, he's got plenty. He would bless David and his men, right? Maybe not, skip to verse 10. <laughs> look, look, look in what this fool, this hardened guy says. Who's this fellow David? Nabal sneered to the young men. Who does this son of Jesse think he is? There's lots of servants these days run away from their masters. Should I, now this is what clued me in when I was studying this passage. It gives us a clue to why Nabal was so hardened, why he was so off. Watch this real quick. Should I take, what does it say? My bread and what? And my water and my meat that I've slaughtered for my. Did you see it? My, mine, mine, mine. Churlish and childish, selfish, insecure. You, did you see it coming from here? I'm imagining Nabal grew up with so much insecurity. By the time he had a lot of money, he's like, I, look at me, it's mine, it's all mine. And the problem that happens with us that are blessed financially and, and, and been given so much by God, here's the problem. When we don't get the revelation that it's all God's and he has graciously delegated beauty or brains or bucks to us, and we all of a sudden think that it was me in my mother's womb that chose to give a big baby brain and lots of goods, then we become prideful, just like this guy right here. He's hardened. Old Dave is just, can you imagine? Dave is like the anointed king. He's gonna be the king. He's out, you know, with all his awesome guys that are in debt and depressed and just, you know, don't, can't get a job. So Dave's like, oh, come on, you know, you can. And he's just asking for a, for a little bit. Reminds me of Christmas Vacation. I don't know about you guys, but you remember watching Christmas Vacation? And Chevy Chase is like David. You know, he's just trying to get an end of the year bonus. And he's trying to, remember he's trying to build the pool? You, sorry if you guys, if you don't remember that. And he's all stoked, yeah. Cousin Eddie shows up. And he gets the bonus in the, in the mail. Do you remember what it was? It's the, it's the jelly of the month. It's the gift that keeps on giving all year round, Clark. <laughs> that's basically what's happening here. Sorry, that's just what the preacher's mind goes to. And David does what cousin, remember what cousin Eddie did? If I remember right, goes to the boss and like basically holds him hostage. <laughs> Mine, mine, mine. So Dave gets this response. If you're a note taker and write down number two, he becomes hot. So you got hardened, you got the hard head, and now you're gonna see the hot head that none of us have ever reacted like this way, but I'm just gonna show you just in case you can relate. Verse 12, so David's young men Return, they told him what Nabal had said. <laughs> Look at David's response. Cousin Eddie's, get your swords. <laughs> that was David's reply as he strapped on his own. And 400 of the men started off with Dave and 200 remained behind to guard their equipment. You ever feel so taken advantage of, so overlooked, so angry that literally your, your immediate response, you could feel your blood boiling in your body. Maybe you're like, yeah, I'm feeling that right in these last couple of weeks because of what has occurred in my life. 
And maybe it's not physical. Maybe, <laughs> you know what I've noticed lately is this revenge, retaliation. Sometimes it's in a review. Google, have you ever seen the Google reviews? I, um, I really love business owners and leaders who take a shot downfield. Recently, I, I uh, went to this mechanic or this guy that needed to fix something on my car, on my Manly convertible, 2010 S5. You love it. So, um, and I love this guy. He, he just did business. Don't you love when people just do business, right? And so they send an email, right? Have you gotten this? And they say, can you just take two minutes to, to do a review? Let me just say, take the two minutes and bless someone with a five star, okay? And what it, what it did, it said, okay, you can see your reviews. And so the, the, I looked at my reviews and they were all just five star reviews. And I hope you don't hear me saying, oh, I'm awesome because I only give five star reviews. But it's just in my nature, like I, I just wanna bless someone and encourage. Now, if I get bad service, I'll probably go talk to the person in a tactful way, but I certainly won't just blister a Google review with the one star. <laughs> Can I just lovingly encourage Love Church? If you have a problem with a business, how about just lovingly encourage and talk to them? This might be an opportunity for you to grow. Hey, take it for what it's worth and then move on. But you know what? When you get good service, take the two minutes and five star review someone. We live in such a jacked up world. It's like Nancy that's oh, negative Nancy. One star, one star. It's like, oh, geez, killing me. Maybe not get the swords, may not review. Here's what I've seen, and I just wanna encourage this. One of the things I love about my mom is when my parents got divorced when I was young, she didn't say one bad thing about my dad. And she had a lot of ammo. My dad, same thing. Let, let me just lovingly say this again, and no shame, no blame. Divorce is hard enough, parents, and I can't imagine the pain that's in your heart, but please don't take the pain to this place where you pin your kids against your spouse. Please. That's a sword. I don't care how much ammo you have. It's a sword. Dave, David, <laughs> Big Dave is about to lose his mind. He's a hothead. Then the unnamed servant steps up at the right time. Because Dave's, Dave's like, get the swords, we going. And, and one of Nabal's servants catches wind and goes to Abigail. Abigail didn't know what was going on. And Abby, who was Abby? She was the beautiful, wise, someone you could actually have a conversation with, not Nabal. And this servant goes to, to Abby. He's like, yo, Abby, it's, it's not, man, your knucklehead fool husband again is causing chaos. Dave and his men are about to come and take you out. You better go do something. And the Bible says that Abigail like, gets a bunch of like great food. <laughs> By the way, side note, ladies, when your husband does something dumb, you need to appease someone, go bake a good, good five course meal and bring it to that person. And she heads out. I've, I've heard it said the quickest way to a man's heart is through his stomach, it's true. There's a couple other ways, but we don't have time for that. But that's one of them, okay? So, so any event, all right. She doesn't waste time. She, she rallies, gets the food, and she's gonna go intercept David. And if you're a, number, if you're a note taker, write down number three, it's, it's humility, it's humble. So you got hardened, you got hot, and now you're gonna see this humility and really the wisdom, honestly, and the tact and wisdom of, of Abby and by the way, I've, I've heard it said, the longer it sits, the worse it gets. If you got something going on and you're aware of something, please, please address it right away with humility. And, and that's what happens. She, she takes off and heads, you know, all this with her posse, all this food, 
and intercepts David. And David was, he's like fuming. You ever been like so mad? You like the story gets worse and worse as you're about to go write the email or as you're about to go talk or take someone out. That's what's happening. It's escalating. And drop it down to now verse 23. When, when Abby saw David, okay, I want you to pay attention to this humility here. Watch this. She quickly got off her donkey and she bowed low. That hit me. Do you see? She bowed low before him. Verse 24, she fell at his feet and said, this is another thing. Look, look at this. I accept all blame in this matter, my Lord. Wouldn't it be amazing if we just took, if, if that was like, do you want some homework? Here's your homework. Just, just accept when you do wrong, when I do wrong. Accept the blame. This has been going on since, since the Garden of Eden. Remember when, <laughs> remember when like Adam and Eve just blew it? That was like blame shift central that's gone to all humans since then. I, I'm the, I'm, you know, if something goes wrong, hey mama, why'd you do that? She's like, actually it was you. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Someone say blame shifter. <laughs> not, not, not Abby, she was smart, she was wise, she was humble. And then she says, please listen to what I have to say. I love this. I know Nabal is a wicked, <laughs> ill-tempered man. Don't pay any attention to him. He's a fool, just as his name suggests. <laughs> you say that about your husband, wife, by the way. <laughs> Dude has lost his mind. He's a fool. Never even saw the young men that you sent. Now, my Lord, as surely as the Lord lives, and you yourself live, since the Lord has kept you from murdering and taking vengeance into your own hands, let all your enemies and those who try to harm you be as cursed as Nabal is. And here's a present that I, your servant, have brought to you and your young men. This, this hit me again. Look at 28. Please forgive me if I have offended you in any way. I'm telling you, man, and you can pause there. You can read the rest. You already read it last week, but see the power of the Bible? Did you see it? So there's a position, there's a posture of humility. There is owning up to what her husband did. That's a whole nother level of humility. And then she says these key words, which I would encourage. This is another home. I'm giving you all homework all of a sudden. Here, here's some homework. Will you please? Let's all say it aloud. Will you please forgive me? I'm telling you, it could be the most powerful statement ever. Can I give like another marriage thing? And I don't know why I'm on the parenting and marriage thing today. Probably because I see so much chaos that the enemy is trying to take marriages out right now and families. So let me speak into this a little bit. One of the things that has helped as we raise children is when I would do something dumb and dishonor my wife in front of my kids, I would always ask God for the grace to apologize to her in front of the children. And let me just say, spouses, commit to having this a regular part of your life because um, you are human. You will do something dumb. And if you have kids, two, three, 10, whatever, I don't know how many you have, you're, it's gonna happen. Here, here's, here, dude, and we've, this happened so many times. Even when they're grown kids, we're empty nesters, man. I, we were in Miami and I just did something dumb and I was really disrespectful to my wife. And I'm like, dang, I gotta eat some humble pie. And it was both boys and my, my, my daughter-in-law. It's like, welcome to the family. See how the pastor is such an idiot in front of his wife. And so, you know, we had this long walk and Denise and I talked, I apologized to her first, apologized to God. And then we came back and I, I, I had to look at all my kids, including my bonus kid, <laughs> and look at them in the eye and just say, will you please forgive me? What I did was wrong. Now think about the power of humility. Think about the strained relationship that you have right now in your life. It could be one week, it could be one year. Listen, it could be 10 years. 
that you've held this bitterness in your heart towards someone because of what they have done, no matter what they've, or what you have done. How about just if we walk in humility? Listen, the, the world, here's what the world needs. It doesn't need another political leader. It doesn't need, you know, all these march. You know what it needs? There's one word what the world needs right now. It is humility. Do we need truth? Absolutely. Listen, at this church, we will never compromise the truth of the word of God. But at the same token, I refuse to be divisive and just point fingers and be all prideful as a Christian. It's just mutually exclusive, church. It's, it is. Humility. Humility. And so, she, and then she goes on and she's just, She's really sharing powerfully. David's listening. David's listening. Skip to verse 31 real quick. I want you to see that this is, I added this late. I wanted you to see this because this struck me deep. She, she's talking, look, listen to the end of what she says to David after she brings the food and stuff. She says, don't let this be a blemish on your record then your conscience won't have to bear the staggering burden of needless bloodshed and vengeance. And when the Lord has done these great things for you, please remember me, your servant. How about that? That is a wise woman coming to, to him. And maybe this is God speaking to you, saying, please, don't do it. Don't put something on your conscience, a burden that you can't bear as needless bloodshed and chaos is released by an angry fleshly result of how you are hurt. Don't do it. Don't do it. How would David take it? Look at verse 32. David replied to Abby, praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you to meet me today. Thank God for your good sense. Anybody just grateful for the people that come into your life at just the right time and you're like, ha, oh, like that was just the, a perfectly spoken word at a time I needed it. Thank God for your good sense. Bless you for keeping me from murder, from carrying out vengeance with my own hands. Do, do you hear this theme? Because we as humans, I, we wanna take vengeance with our own ways, our own hands. But, and we're gonna see it in a minute, but, but the best revenge is righteous revenge, which what? We delegate to God to revenge and avenge. Verse 35, then David accepted her present and told her, return home in peace. I've heard what you said. We will not take the lug nuts off the tires. wrote my notes, humility saves. If pride kills, humility saves. Think about the power of humility on both sides. You got Abby coming, that's, that's a courage, did it not? And humility to apologize on her husband's behalf. She comes with, so humility leads, and then David, listen now, listen, stay, stay tuned here, don't, don't phase out on me. This is big. David has a, a choice at that moment how he is gonna respond. He could have been like, you know what? I appreciate that, Abby. Good grub. I'm still whacking that dude. It's true. But David courageously sees it as a, as a hand of God. Let me ask you this. What are you, what are you about to do that's really dumb and God sent me on mission and he's asking you, like, how are you gonna respond in this moment? Still stay stubborn and hardened and be like, I'm just gonna do it anyway. God will forgive me. He might forgive you, and let me just say it, he will forgive you, but there will be consequences. There will. And I care too much about you, and God cares too much about you, than you to live in a stiff and hardened and chaotic human existence when it doesn't have to be. We started this church, why? so you would experience God's best for your life. That's just not a cool cliche, that's real. That's what we do all day long. Because I look in the world and I see the chaos and I'm like, I have two choices, tap out or do something about it. And be like, no, I'm fighting for you. 
You're fighting for your friend and your neighbor and your coworker and the student down the hall who's depressed and doesn't know who they are. That's why we do what we do. So humility saves, but on the other side, pride kills. Look at 36 and we'll try to land the plane here. Check this out, 36, when Abby arrived home, <laughs> she, she found that Nabal was throwing a big party and was celebrating like a king. I mean, he was partying like it was 1999. I mean, he was living like a rock star. He's in Vegas just slamming them, right, and all the homies. He was very drunk. I underline that, he was very drunk. Hammered, Nabal, fool. It's always tough when you get a fool with a lot of money and a lot of time. Bad recipe. Could be. He was very drunk, so she didn't tell him anything about her meeting with David until dawn the next day. Side note, maybe marriage tip number three, like, you know, interesting thing. There's a, there's a verse in the Bible that says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. You guys know that one? Denise and I used to take this so literal and we'd be like up at three in the morning going, we've got to work this out. <laughs> we will not go to bed on our anger. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like hangry and all, like totally tired, out of my mind, saying dumb stuff. Pro tip, marriage tip. <laughs> Who was that, Mandizzle? <laughs> Mandizzle, why don't you get up here and grab the mic and preach for your boy? <laughs> That's right. Here's what, here's what I would challenge you to look at each other. Sweetheart, I, I'm gonna say some dumb stuff. We are gonna get to the bottom of this, but let's do it after we have a good night's sleep. Just barely touch their hand. Lord, give us grace. <laughs> Amen. And go back to bed. It's wisdom. In the morning, verse 37, when Nabal was sober, his wife told him what had happened. Now, this is fascinating. As a result, he had a stroke. What? Some translations say he had a heart attack. And he lay paralyzed on his bed like a what? How many of you know you reap what you sow? This man who was hardened, he was a hardened man. And what happened? He was paralyzed like a stone. And then 38, about 10 days later, the Lord struck him and he died. Yikes. Pride kills. A couple things. Pride kills. Galatians 6, 7, just jot it down in your notes. I just said it, but I wanna give it to you. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Nabal, fool, churlish, hard, obstinate, stubborn, stiff-necked. That was his choice. He presents that in his pride, and then God says, okay, if that's the way you want it, it I hate that it has to be that way, okay. And he becomes stiff as a stone. And let me just give you this good news Romans 12, 19, dear friends, here, here it is, here's the challenge. Never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous, that's why it's called righteous revenge. Leave it to the righteous anger of God for the scriptures say, I will take revenge, I will pay them back. Think about that. David, by God's grace, he speaks through Abby. He says, okay, I'm not gonna do anything. God handled it. It's so much better when you let God defend, your, defend you. Don't try to defend yourself. It's, it, God, he's the ultimate judge. He's the righteous judge. He sees everything. He will handle it. And it will reduce your stress level like crazy. Okay, practical challenge. Because some here are like, man, this has been right on time for me. If you're really honest with yourself, your heart has been hardened lately. I talked to a friend recently, and because of politics and, and all the media and social media 
it, it just seems like he's like, I know I don't want to live this way, but my heart has just been so hardened. And I don't know what it is for you that's hardening your heart. Mike, Mike gave a great challenge, and maybe this is part of it. I, I asked my wife, I'm like, man, I got off social media probably, I don't know, three, four years ago. Didn't watch TV, I watched Sports Center, the Bible, and just like sent it. That, that was my life for a while. And, and that's not everybody's life, I'm not saying that. But be careful what you consume. Just be super careful, please, because you don't know what it can do to harden someone's heart. And, and I'm with you, man. I, I get prideful, I get hardened. And a lot of times I don't even know it. And um, so over our break, I'll give you a quick uh, acronym that God gave me. I was actually swimming a lap and God downloaded this, this uh, acronym called RESET. You guys wanna see it? Um, if you're experiencing a little tension in the marriage and the family, a little hard in, you're a little quick, uh, RESET for me. And it was, it was really good. It was, it was R, it was rest. Someone say rest. It's good. Rest the mind, the body, the soul. It was good. And then number two, E was evaluate. I'm swimming and God's just giving it to me. I was like, evaluate what? Evaluate your rhythms. Evaluate your iCal. Evaluate your goals. Evaluate your life. Where are you going? Where's the church? Evaluate. Someone say evaluate. Okay, uh, saturate, and that was just saturating the script. One of the cool things we did while we were away, we went to a live worship recording with Cody Carnes, and, and we're in this just tiny room, just worshiping Jesus, and he had a song called, I forget, it was like a Holy Spirit, and in that moment, I just felt like, oh my goodness, I'm saturating in the spirit, and something shifted in my soul. It was an interesting time. Saturate. How, how much time are you saturating in the scriptures and by the spirit? That we we're trying to get all these remedies, saturate, saturate, saturate. E is elevate. And I felt like there's just, in this season for many of us, we, we've been kind of here, maybe, maybe even, he, he, this is what's gonna happen. And the T was actually um, transition, but I, I, I changed it to translate. Why, what does that mean? Everything that God has been speaking to me translated to real life application. It's one thing to know that you've been getting hardened. It's a whole nother thing, man, to change. So I'm put, I'm, I'm shaking up my schedule. I'm moving some meetings. I'm saying, Lord, I need to translate this because without me even knowing, I got a little hardened. I got a little edgy. And good thing I got an Abby in my life to let me know that you need to grow. I found this, it's funny, I told you I have a manly convertible now, 2010, S5, black, beautiful, 30,000 miles, it's great. And my wife got in it, and she's like, why is it so herky-jerky when you start? Well, I hadn't driven a car like this ever, a high-performance vehicle, I, don't, I just figured it, it's an automatic, but it drives like a stick. Sick, dude, it's power. And she's like, no, nah, I don't think that's real good. <laughs> it's true. So I take it to my uh, trusty friend, the jack of all trades, Al Grosskirth. And Al, this is true. I take it over to his house. He takes out a computer and connects it to my car. Like, who does that? Yeah, like you do. You just got a software program on your laptop, and you go into your friend's car, find this little thing underneath, and just click it in there. Like, what are you doing, what are you doing to me right here? And all of a sudden, this computer thing just starts checking all the systems in my vehicle. It's like green, 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 green red. The code, off, whatever. Needs to, whatever. Long story short, <laughs> I take it in, and what happens is they do a reset to the factory settings of my vehicle. And wouldn't you know it, a few days later after I get it, I'm, I'm stepping on it, it goes... I went from a herky jerk. It was so wild. Here's the thing I learned. My wife had to be in the car to let me know that it was herky jerky. And then I had to connect with the creator of, of the actual program and have a reset in my life. And so I'm not so darn hard and I can have some little bit of humility back in my life. Oh, jeez, so crazy. 
So reset, reset, reset. Lord, thanks for this word, so much more to it. And I know all my friends have been studying this and so much you're speaking in these days. And I, in my major prayer, it's, it's just been the number one prayer probably the last two years, two and a half years for this church. Grow us in humility. We know that pride kills and humility saves. We know it. We see it time and time again. And we all have such a struggle in our human condition. So would you be gracious to us? Give us a gift, a gift of grace, humility, peace. In Jesus' name. Before I say amen, I wanna, I just wanna end with an opportunity for those of you in here, you've been here just a few times, or maybe you've been coming for a long time and you're like, you know, it's time for me to truly humble myself before the king. It's interesting in our text. Abby humbles herself, literally bows before David, the king, the eventual king. I thought, and what, what does she say? She says a variety, she says, please forgive me. I accept the responsibility. And that's, at the end of our encounters, that's what we do. We give people an opportunity to simply humble themselves before God, bow through prayer, and say, God, I have sinned, I've fallen short. We've all sinned, the Bible's clear. We've all fallen short the perfection of God. But because of his love, he steps out of heaven onto the, it still blows my mind, onto this planet. He's born through the Virgin Mary. He lives a perfect life. None of us could. They, Jesus, wrong, talk about wrongfully accused, brutally beaten, nailed to that cross. He's like, man, I love my people too much. I don't wanna be disconnected from them forever. I gotta do something about it. He's brutally murdered. They take him off that cross, they bury him three days later. He, he rises from that tomb and now he just, all throughout mankind, he knocks on hearts, he's like, religion says you have to do, do, do. Relationship, it's already done. I've already paid for your sin. And now it's a simple posture of humility saying, yes, God. And I'm wondering if there's anybody here at church listening online, you go, today's my day. I need to do exactly what this Abby did and fall to my feet before the king. So let's stand together. I wanna make it as simple as possible. If there's anybody here today, you need to respond to this message. You say, I need forgiveness. I need God's grace. I know I'm not perfect. I've done a lot. Listen, I got a friend that's about to get out of jail for murder, and guess what? God has forgiven him, and he's about to set him on a whole new track. If anybody in here says, no, you can't forgive me, God, it's, it's way too much. Oh, really? I, I know a God, it doesn't matter what you have done. You need forgiveness, you need his grace, you can find it today. So as the band plays, you come forward, I'll lead you in a prayer. Listen, church, if you don't have to go anywhere, Please stay and pray, please. Souls are at stake, eternal destinies. This is not a religious routine. This is, this, is, this is God reaching down his hand to his people. So if God is speaking to you anywhere, all in this auditorium, listening online, as the band plays, humble yourself. Come forward right here, I'll lead you in a prayer. God, forgive me, I wanna follow you. I wanna go to heaven. We'll connect you with some friends that will help you on your journey. Make peace. Humility saves. Humility saves. Amen. You come as the man plays.
about this? All, all for you. All for you. Anybody else want to join my friend? Solidify the deal. Cement it. You got any doubts in your mind, doubts in your heart? Join one of my, one of my friends. Anybody? Come on. Come on up. Come on up, Mike. It's cool. Love it. <laughs> so cool. What an honor. This is, this is truly an honor. It really is. And really, it's God would speak through little Toddy this many years later. Isn't it wild? This is heart of care for you guys. So if you're ready, you can just pray this prayer out loud. I'll lead you in it. And it's really your heart connected with, with God. Just say out loud, say, Lord God, I open up my heart, invite you inside to be my God, to be my savior, to be my friend. Yeah. Forgive me of my sin, wash me clean. I've decided today to follow you, Jesus. <laughs> From this day forward, I'm yours. <laughs> Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs>